Okay, and we are live. ¿Qué tal, amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with yet another live stream. Thursday, the 7th of September, 7.30 p.m. Spain mainland time coming to you from the center of the country on the outskirts of Madrid today. We'll look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press as we normally do. We'll go into the comment section, check out what is happening there, see what's happening among the community in the comment section. And then in the second half of today's live stream, I'll go into the chat section that I have here to my left on the screen and we'll check out what's happening in the chat section, what people are talking about today here in Spain. Or if you're watching the video, say hello in the chat. Now, straight into the news. And it's about the new participation that a Saudi Arabia company has in one of Spain's biggest companies, Telefonica. The other day, this Saudi company bought 9.9% of Telefonica, and uh, the Spanish government is scratching its head, wondering how this has happened. But the truth of the matter is that Spain has a very close business relationship with Saudi Arabia. And as we can see here, Spain's ties with Saudi Arabia two decades of trade agreements on construction, arms, renewables, and tourism. So far away, but less so every day. The relationship between Spain and Saudi Arabia has been growing closer for two decades, to the point that in this time, it has become a strategic partner in the field of business, where the very high purchasing power of the Saudis has boosted a wealth of commercial agreements and collaborations with Spanish companies. In this context, moreover, where the country is immersed in an ambitious stage of modernization called Vision 2030, in which it is trying to reinvent its economy to get rid of its heavy dependence on oil. The door to Saudi business opened wide thanks to the excellent relations between King Juan Carlos I and King Abdullah, which led to such juicy deals for Spanish companies as the construction of the, of the Medina La Meca high-speed railway line and the Riyadh Metro. So there we go. Very close business ties between Spain and Saudi Arabia, thanks in part to the good relationship that the former king of Spain, Juan Carlos I, had with the king of Saudi Arabia or the uh, Saudi royal family. As we know, they have a holiday home in Marbella as well. Don't know how often they get down to Marbella, but it's a huge mansion down there. And uh, currently, the Spanish Supercopa, one of the football, one of the important football matches in this country, is funnily enough held in Saudi Arabia. Nobody knows why, but obviously there's some type of business deal going on there involving the uh, former head of the Spanish Football Association, Mr. Rubiales, and uh, a former player with a very high profile, thanks to a relationship with a famous singer, Gerard Piquet. Now, the second piece of news, this one here, and it's the Equality Ministry here in Spain has presented a new app called Me Toca, My Turn, and it's so that household chores are not done by the same person. The Acting Minister for Equality, Irene Montero, accompanied by the Secretary of State for Equality, Angela Rodriguez, a.k.a. Pam, presented this Thursday the Where Have You Been campaign on the co-responsibilities plan and the new application to time household chores so that they are not always done by the same person. Under the name Mitoka and with the slogan fed up of always having to do the housework yourself, download the Mitoka app, create your work team and Equality has shown the features of this tool which is already available free of charge for iOS and Android systems and whose development at a cost of 211,750 euros went to the technology consultancy Aware But SA, according to data collected by Europa Press from the public sector procurement platform. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, is an app like this really necessary? Do we need to invade people's private lives, get into their homes with all of this data that will be collected on this app to see who does what? Uh, in the home, who does the cooking, who does the ironing, who does the cleaning. That is what we want to know. And what about people that have a housekeeper? What's going to happen? So uh, I don't think I'll be downloading this app, but uh, let me know your opinion on it, if it is a good idea or if it is a huge waste of taxpayer money and more invasion into your private lives from the government. Let me know. 
the third piece of news here, and it is about the places in Spain that have the most touristic overcrowding during the summer. The days of the beach bar, sun lounger and siesta are coming to an end, at least for most of us mortals. That's why it's time to take stock and find out which Spanish resorts have been the most saturated with tourists this summer so that we can avoid them next year. Or else we can set out to discover them in the best possible way due to their great appeal. Number one on the list is Peñiscola in Castellón, famous not only for its beaches, but also for housing the castle of Pope Luna, the last Spanish pontiff, whose real name was Pedro Martínez de Luna, although he would go down in Ecle... Ecles... What's this word here? Ecclesiastical history as Benedict the Thirteenth. For this reason, the most visited monument in the municipality is none other than the, this unique building. After Peñiscola, the most crowded places are Albarracín in Teruel and the Saint Llorenz de Cadesa in Mallorca, with uh, 23.35 uh, and 21.35 tourists per inhabitant, uh, respectively. Uh, there we go. So the um, the uh, history there of uh, Benedict the Thirteen. This uh, what's the word there? Ecclesiastical history. I think that word is uh, meaning the clergy. I think of the uh, Christian religions, and uh, we can see here a picture of uh, Peniscula with this uh, castle there up on the hill. The uh, what's it called? The uh, Castle of Pope Luna, the most popular place in the country, followed by Alba Rafin and a place in Mallorca with uh, lots of tourists. So probably best to avoid those places in summer and uh, also to uh, find a better time of the year to visit them if you want to avoid the crowds because they get very, very busy indeed. And the final piece of news, which is the best cheese flan pudding in the supermarket? Cheese flan has been gaining ground over the more classic egg flan and you only have to take a stroll through the corresponding section in the supermarkets to see for yourself. There you will find many varieties of the former which is clearly in favour with the public and not so many of the latter, perhaps perceived as more old-fashioned. Once we have opted for modernity, which cheese flan do we choose when we go to the supermarket or the shop? Pastry teacher Esther Rolas who has worked in the classrooms and bakeries of the Hoffman School and Le Atelier in Barcelona and the Pasticia and Moulin Chocolate in Madrid, blind tasted nine brands. If you want to know which she thought was better and which was worse, watch the video. Well, we're not going to watch the video, but I'm going to put the uh, list and we can see here the Hacendado and the Keiku, Dul and Reina came out on top as the cheese flans that are most bought in supermarkets, followed by the Carry 4 home brand, Danone, Al Campo, La Ermita, and the last one, Goshua, which uh, didn't get a very good rating. And if you're not familiar with the cheese flan, this is what it generally looks like. And you can buy it here in uh, most supermarkets in Spain. And uh, it is a, a, a treat and a very well-known uh, postre or dessert or pudding, if you like. So there we go. Let us know your opinions on the uh, dessert, the flan, which I think has French origins, but uh, don't quote me on that. Now into the comment section I'm going to go now. Let's have a look here. And the first one is from Angela. Uh, best way to check the weather is to look out the window. Too many sites giving scaremongering weather info Anyway, this is the rainy season. Now, I get the opinion here that um, uh, perhaps a bit of a, a, a weather skeptic uh, is this viewer, uh, not believing uh, what the uh, bureaus of meteorology are uh, saying, the warnings that they are giving out, obviously, and uh, people are entitled to their opinion. Uh, this is the rainy season, according to Angela, and that is true. But the rains that have been falling recently, if you are caught in one of those heavy storms where some people unfortunately died, I think five in total because the three people missing haven't been found yet. So five people dying. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Angela, but uh, in a, a storm, uh, sometimes uh, the most likely people don't die. So uh, I suggest that you check the weather apps and the uh, bureaus of meteorology to see what is heading your way if you are here in Spain, because if one of these darners falls close to where you are, you might be affected. So uh, don't just stick your head out the window, uh, Angela. Uh, be a bit more sensible than that. 
Another one here from Mr. Vett. Paul Stamont should not be a fugitive. The referendum was not illegal, in my view. All sovereign people have the right to self-determination. Catalonia's independence declaration from 1641 should be the basis of their sovereignty. Yes, Mr. Vett. Thank you for pointing this out, but Spain has a thing called a constitution. And uh, anybody that comes from a country with a country with a constitution will know that it's an, a very important document that some people hold uh, in very high esteem. Uh, for example, we all hear about the amendment, all about the amendments, and all parts of the constitutions in some country that allow people to do things, and that is their rights. And here in Spain, the constitution states that you cannot separate from the rest of the country, hence the illegal referendum. And that is why Mr. Puigdemont is currently a fugitive in Brussels, uh, and uh, uh, as I said, number one fugitive from the Spanish justice system. So that is what it's all about. And according to people that know uh, better than me, uh, the Spanish Constitution's idea is to hold the country together. Okay, so that's one of the reasons, not have all of these places go off separating and uh, breaking the country currently known as Spain. And Mr. Puigdemont is the number one culprit uh, uh, for that, along with some other of his cronies in Catalonia. So that's your opinion, but uh, I reckon that a lot of people here in Spain wouldn't agree with you. Another one here from Heidi. We got caught on the way back from Catalonia on Monday. We pulled over a few times to sit out the worst, the worst of it, but eventually arrived home safe and well. But it was scary to say the least. My thoughts are with those who have suffered damages and lost due to the storm. Yeah, Heidi, what you should have done is just stick your head out the window and uh, got a weather forecast before traveling that day. That would have been uh, uh, the suggestion of the viewer that we saw before. Uh, Angela, who uh, says don't pay any attention to those uh, weather apps because they scaremonger. And tell that to the people that died the other day as well, Angela, that, that it was scaremongering, right? But uh, anyway, I'm not going <laughs> to talk too much about this because uh, some people don't like this conversation. But uh, as uh, Heidi points out there, it was a dangerous drive back. And if you're on the road, in your car when one of these uh, heavy rainstorms goes over, which can cause great damage, as we have seen, uh, better to pull over and wait for the uh, worst to go by if you can, and uh, probably uh, try not to get caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. So thanks, Heidi, for that, and good to see that you guys got back to uh, Madrid safely. Another one here from Metal Shifter. If the Catalans gain independence, Barcelona FC will have to leave La Liga. No more El Clasico matches. I think all the footy fans won't like that. No country's national team can play in another's domestic league. Yep, but I think this is part of um, uh, having your cake and eating it too, that the Catalonians uh, will probably prefer to keep their biggest football club, FC Barcelona, in the Spanish league. Unless there's another league that will take them in, for example, maybe the Italian league or the German league or the French league maybe will take Barcelona in. Or maybe they could have a little competition amongst themselves, maybe against Girona. Tarragona probably has a team there. Uh, Lleida has a team. Other teams in uh, the Catalonian region, maybe they could have their own competition. But uh, I think that uh, as uh, other, people, other people have pointed out, if uh, Catalonia ever does separate, people there would still like to have all of the rights that they have currently. And uh, one of those uh, sporting rights is playing in La Liga. But uh, I could be wrong. Let me know. Another one here from William. I live in Spain and own a house here. As an Irish national... I'm not required to apply for a TIE as Ireland is a member of the EU. The NIE is the equivalent of the PPS number in Ireland, and it's advisable to apply for residency and swap the Irish driving licence for a Spanish equivalent. Yeah, William, thanks. This um, uh, question popped up the other day because of a gentleman in Torrevieja, I think, that uh, has a, a medical issue, has a, a, an ankle problem or part of a leg, I think, and uh, needed to see a doctor and uh, wanted to know how to get his hands on a TIE. I think he had an Irish passport and uh, some other passport as well, can't remember, but dual citizen. But with the Irish passport, I think you should be able to get an NIE number. The TIE card is something different. That, of course, is the little plastic residency card that you carry around. I always recommend getting this, uh, even if you don't have to get it, because it makes things a whole lot easier here in Spain to have this card, because you have to show documentation a lot of the times here in Spain, and uh, using a passport, which is, uh, I don't know about European passports, what they cost, but Australian passport, passports are expensive, 
to uh, have uh, the risk of losing them or damaging them. Uh, you pay around four hundred dollars for a passport nowadays, so it is an expensive uh, document. But uh, as I said, I recommend getting the little TIA thing that you just carry around in your wallet. And if anybody asks you for identification, which they will here in Spain, just uh, whip it out and uh, away you go rather than having to worry. But uh, getting the NIE, car, the NIE number shouldn't be an issue for an Irish national or an Irish passport holder. And the other piece of advi advice here that uh, William gives is to swap that dr Irish driving license for a Spanish equivalent. And uh, I think that's also a fairly good recommendation from William because uh, even though the Guadi Civil, if they pull you over, are not going to say anything if you're driving on a French or a German or Italian, any other EU uh, driver's license. Uh, the Spanish one is uh, just as good. And if you go back to Ireland, you can drive on it as well. I mean, no dramas, right? Uh, a friend of mine, one of the first things he did, uh, an Irish friend of mine, uh, Brian, back in the day, was he got his uh, driver's license exchanged for a Spanish one and uh, hasn't looked back. So good advice. Another one here from uh, Patricia. Oh, off to El Hierro soon then to support. I had no idea. Yeah, we saw this little hotel that was at risk of closing recently. The owners have decided to keep it open. Uh, uh, they were going to close it because of vandalism. Uh, they weren't getting the support from the Canary government, I don't think. Apparently it's listed as a some type of historical building and they uh, weren't getting the funds to uh, keep it uh, maintained. But the owners the other day changed their mind or recently changed their mind, going to keep it open and uh, it's going to sit there on the cliff on the island of El Hierro down there in the Canaries. And Patricia, they're saying that uh, they will pay it a visit, have a holiday at that hotel and support it. And the final comment here from uh, Alexander, Camisa, uh, which should be spelt with a C, Pantalon and Sapato, don't know what that word is, are also from Arabic. Now, I don't mean to be um, uh, picky he here, uh, Alexander, but I don't think any of those words come from uh, Arabic. I think uh, Pantalon is maybe Latin. Sabato, I think, also is Latin. And Camisa, I believe, is Latin. Arabic words in Spanish, albaca, almohada, azafran, algodón, naranja, ojalá, rehén. Those are Arabic words, definitely. But the ones that you pointed out here, camisa, pantalon, and sabado, I don't think so. But uh, again, I uh, stand to be proven wrong. Please let me know if I am, and I will apologize. But uh, from what I have seen from the etymology of those words that you put there, I think from uh, Latin. But uh, again, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Now, that's the end of the news and comments, 17 minutes. So we're going to go into the uh, chat section now. Before I do, I'm just going to change the backdrop. Now, this one was sent in from Bagabones, and uh, apparently Bagabones' brother is on the Camino uh, Primitiva, I think he said it was called, in Asturias. And uh, this is uh, the typical Asturian village there in the mountains, a very nice part of the country. I, I, I can't recommend Asturias enough. If you've uh, got the urge to travel, you want to see more of Spain, if you're just going to the same places over and over again, or if you're living down there in the south, get to Asturias if you can. Hop on a train, hop on a bus, hop on a plane, visit this wonderful part of the country. And uh, Bagger Bones' brother, no doubt, enjoying the Camino. Good luck. Now, I'm also going to put the like icon on the screen. If you haven't hit it yet, please do so. We're currently at uh, 45 likes, so if you hit the like icon, we might get up to 50. So hit it, please. We'll see. And also, the uh, email address is this one here. So if you've got a similar picture or any picture of Spain that you would like to send through, spainspeaks at gmail.com is the email address. And uh, happy to receive your photos. Uh, happy to receive your recommendations uh, about news. Lots of people sending me links to stories. Thanks for that. I'll get around to uh, some of them. Some of them, of course, are uh, maybe not appropriate for the channel, but some of them are. So uh, if you feel that you have something that you want to send my way to bring my attention to, that's the email address. And uh, Oh, we're up to 60 likes now, so we, we cracked the 50. Now, into the comment section I'm going to go. Let me uh, see if I can uh, find it here to open it up. I'll just scroll up to the top. Some usual uh, f faces in the chat section. 
Steve saying, um, why does the heat seem different to being in Spain? Now, I don't know where you are, Steve, but I presume you are in the United Kingdom, which is going through a bit of a, a heat wave at the moment, the 7th of September. I'll say that again, heat wave in the UK, 7th of September, just in case you are uh, a non-believer and you don't think that is uh, <laughs> happening. It is. And other parts of Europe are also going through heat waves. So here in the south of uh, south of Europe, we've got uh, Dana's coming through, and that rolled onto Greece and caused absolute havoc there. And now in the UK, the 7th of September, it's in the 30s. So uh, go believe it. Thanks, Steve. And why is it different? Uh, probably the uh, humidity levels. I've got no idea. I've got no idea, but I'm sure we'll get uh, some answers here. I think we've got some answers already, to tell you the truth. Barbara coming in from uh, Player Flamenca. If anyone has access to UK TV, there is currently a new series at 3 p.m. Spanish time on ITV1 called James Martin's Spanish Adventure. Each program, uh, in each program, he visits a different part of the country. Thanks, Barbara, for pointing that out. And uh, I'm sure that lots of uh, UK uh, people living in Spain have access to UK television. It seems to be a fairly common thing. And, and if you haven't, just get yourself a VPN and uh, connect to those online internet services that sometimes can be geo-blocked. That's what I do if I want to watch the uh, BBC, for example. I haven't tried ITV, to be honest. I might have, but can't remember. Uh, but uh, BBC, there's a, an Australian um, series on at the moment called uh, Colin from Accounts, which is uh, quite funny if you like uh, Aussie humour. So check that one out as well on uh, BBC iPlayer. Uh, Andrew, it's got to do with the humidity. That, that, that would be my... Uh, theory. Uh, I know that some parts of the Mediterranean can be quite humid, but uh, England with all of the uh, green, and if the weather continues this way, that might be a thing of the past as well, but England normally green, and I think that adds to the humidity. I know that uh, from the cricket matches that I've seen in the UK, the ball tends to swing a lot. If you, f if you are familiar with cricket, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're from the States, probably not. But just imagine a ball curving through the air because of the humid conditions. Uh, so I imagine it's got something to do with that. And the times that I have spent in the United Kingdom, a couple of years I lived there and back and forth for various reasons over the years in the summer months, humid. Mm. So I think that's uh, one of the differences. Uh, what else we got going on here? Sunny London, 32 degrees today. 32 degrees today. That's the same as it was here in Madrid today, 32 degrees. So we're on par, Andrew. Andrew also coming in from uh, Woodbury, Minnesota. Anthony, sorry if I didn't say uh, Anthony. Uh, what advice do you have for an American citizen who has an EU passport and planning to move to Spain for retirement? Well, Andrew, what I would do, uh, considering that you've got an EU passport, is that it should be a fairly simple thing for you to do. Just come over here, get your NIE number, and uh, away you go. Don't, uh, don't uh, take my word as gospel for that. I mean, get some advice before you come, but I think, that's, I think it's as easy as that. And uh, my recommendation would be to spend a couple of months here, get a feel for the country, check out some different areas, maybe go down south, maybe head up north, center, wherever you're planning on living. Uh, check it out for a couple of months, get a feel for the country, and that will uh, help you take better decisions, I imagine, rather than coming here. Uh, blind, let's say, without you know previous knowledge of the country and finding out that maybe it's not for you and ruining your uh, plans that way. So uh, if you haven't been here, I imagine that you have, but if you haven't, spend a little bit longer uh, if, you, if you want to get to a uh, feel for the country. That, that, that's, that's what I'd do. Uh, Frank coming in. Hi, everyone. Hope you are all well from a beautiful and sunny Crawley, UK. There we go. Another uh, UK viewer enjoying the good weather in uh, Crawley there. Thanks, Frank, for that. High Flyer coming in too. Wishing everyone well. Thanks for that, uh, High Flyer, 1965. James and Kathy coming in from Worcester, 29 degrees Celsius there. Uh, enjoying a glass of South African white wine in the garden. There we go. South Africa does have a reputation as uh, having decent wines nowadays, I do believe. Richard coming in from North York, expecting 29 degrees on Saturday. Even woke up to a slight Kalima this morning. Well, 29 degrees in, uh, and I'll say it again, the 7th, of, uh, the 7th of September, 29 degrees in Yorkshire. Now, uh, does that happen often? Does that happen often? No. 
Old Guy Doing Stuff, a.k.a. Grant, coming in from Asturias. Hope you are well today, Grant, up there in the north of Spain. I don't know if your village is similar to the one we've got here or where you live, Grant. Let us know. Mike coming in from uh, North Virginia. How is it back in Madrid? Am, am I missing Portugal? Yeah, I, I, I miss the coast, uh, Mike, to tell you the truth, and the, the laid-back lifestyle and that small city there in Portugal. Everything's very relaxed, and you come back here, and it's just uh, traffic problems, aggressive people on the roads, <sighs> people everywhere. Everywhere you go, you have to queue. You have to do this, do that. Traffic jams, as I said, horrible coming back to Madrid. And uh, just in Portugal, it's just so calm. What else? Pauline coming in from a lot cooler Rojales today. Good to see it's uh, cooler down there. If you want hot weather now in, in September, don't worry about coming to Spain. Just head to the UK. Eric coming in from a warmish terraza. Hope everyone is doing fine. Thanks for the updates. Thank you very much, Eric, for tuning in. Stan, normally coming checking in from Poland, but today checking in from Gorizia in Italy. Thanks, Stan. Stan gets around, I must say. Janet coming in from Oxford. Is it hot there too, Janet? Got the air conditioning on? Let us know. Uh, Hive Mind 2000 said, If I told my dad it was his turn, toca, le toca, uh, it wouldn't have worked out well. No, and the older generations probably... <laughs> probably <laughs> Didn't think uh, too much about that. I know uh, from my personal experience, um, uh, grandfather, my grandfather's, well, one did because he, his uh, wife died quite, um, quite a long time ago. So he was, uh, he was uh, on his own for a long time. So he had to do these things. But my other grandfather, no, he didn't see him doing much inside. Did a lot outside. Garden was his responsibility. Inside wasn't. And uh, but that changed with the next generation, and uh, because my father is uh, spends more time on the vacuum cleaner than anyone else, I think he likes to uh, vacuum. To be honest, greetings uh, from Tidol says James. Thanks uh, for tuning in, Jose Antonio. A bit late today. No, not too late, according to Jose Antonio. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, Jose Antonio. UB coming in. Not sure from where. Maybe Portugal. Boa tarde, says uh, UB. Buenas tardes in uh, Spanish. Boa tarde, of course, in Portuguese. Alberathin crowded. I arrived late. Yeah, apparently it was. It had a lot of visitors this year. Well, those were statistics uh, based on the local inhabitants and how much the village increases in population in the summer. That's what they were talking about. Number one, Al uh, number one was Peniscola, I think. Number two, Alba Rathin, and the place in Mallorca was number three, Jose Antonio. Places that no, you know, not necessarily have the most amount of tourists, but the change on uh, the non-tourist season. Uh, let's have a look. What else? Manilva, where is where Stephen is. Uh, enjoying a Rioja down there. Cheers, cheers mate, says Stephen. Che thanks, Stephen. Probably should have stayed in uh, Wales. Maybe could have caught that heat wave. Um... Ecclesiastical, that's the word. Yeah, I had trouble uh, getting that one out. I'm not uh, familiar with a lot of these words related to the church. Ecclesiastical, probably because I didn't uh, grow up uh, in that environment, as uh, some people no doubt were. But uh, related to the clergy, ecclesiastical, thanks for that. I'll try to uh, get those words out better in the future, but uh, they catch me by surprise. Uh, Gigi coming in. Greetings from North, uh, warm, sorry, Northern California. I like the cheese, uh, cheese flan far better, creamier and more like a pudding. Yeah, uh, that's what they said, wasn't it? That the cheese flan is the uh, more popular one nowadays rather than the um, just the normal vanilla flan or the caramel flan or whatever other flan uh, you try to say. It's easy for Pete to say. Exactly, yeah, it is. But nowadays, uh, there's lots of uh, pronunciation help on the internet. Ecclesiastical. Uh, what else? Greek yogurt is not good uh, in Spain. The brand Arena is okay, though, and cheap. Uh, Greek yogurt? Well, I've, I've never tried it in Greece, so I can't really say. But um, I don't mind uh, Greek yogurt uh, every now and again. Quite uh, a lot of fat. But uh, apart from that, it's okay. NVN's in the chat saying hello. Thanks uh, for that. Alma coming in from uh, with Simon from uh, Benny Hoffa. Uh, won't be downloading the app. Chores will get done without having to notify an app. Yeah, I think a lot of people uh, probably think that way. And, I mean, what are they going to do with the information? Uh, 
published statistics that uh, only 25% of men do household chores or only 25% of women do household chores, or what are they going to do? I mean, is there not a better way to spend 211,000 euros? Don't know, but I'm sure some people will download it. Steve saying that La Cañada near Marbella is cheaper shopping, Janet. There we go. Not sure what that conversation is about, but obviously a, a, a conversation going on in the chat. Uh, Flan is huge with Cubans and Cuban Americans. Uh, bland, unremarkable, and lacking any chocolate, fruit crust, or just redeeming characteristic. There we go. Yeah, the cheese flans, as I said, that they're, they're not bad. And the, they spoke about the supermarket ones. You often go to restaurants and they say a flan casero, and you wonder if they've just squeezed it out of a you know a supermarket container half the time. But uh, they often say flan casero, flan casero. Cuajada casera. Uh, what else? Let's have a look. Let's have a look here quickly. Patrick saying that Peniscula is the beach scenes were shot in the film El Cid. Though, and, the, and some shots of the troops entering and leaving the castle. There we go. The old, uh, was that Charlton Heston in El Cid? Don't know. Can't remember. It was before my time, El Cid, but it was one of the classics, of course. In Spanish, El Cid. Th, 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 el Cid for the rest of us. Teraz coming in also. A little late today for the chat. Hope all is well. Yes, we are. Uh, frequent flyer Alan is in the chat as well from uh, Iceland, flying to Madrid tomorrow. Got the uh, last shipboard dinner. See you on Sunday from Cruz Campo Paradise. Well, you can have all the Cruz Campo you like, Alan. I, I, I won't be, uh, I won't be uh, cutting into your stock. I will not be buying that beer anytime soon. I can tell you that. Uh, by Cess, the village is far too pricey. Um, I'm not sure what this is. <laughs> this is that conversation between Janet and uh, somebody else there. Hail and thunder in Amarinia this afternoon. There we go. I think I read that another uh, uh, rainy spell is going to hit the country soon. Chuck saying that we are moving to Spain after three years preparation, keeping the UK job. Uh, but don't speak Spanish. We need to hire someone. Five hundred pounds uh, for two N NIEs, two hundred and fifty opening a bank account, six hundred pounds for residency for two. There we go. Yeah, don't speak Spanish. Um, you can learn uh, lots of uh, ways to learn Spanish nowadays. Apps online. I've got a video coming out tomorrow where uh, I uh, talk about an app that uh, sponsored that video, sorry, an app, no, uh, uh, an online uh, English school, which seems quite good. So I would recommend that. And uh, I reckon you could pick up enough to get by in an hour if you uh, dedicated some time. I was watching a YouTube video the other day uh, from a, a fairly big YouTuber called Bald and Bankrupt. He was traveling around Venezuela, and he said that he had, he'd been learning Spanish for a year, and he seemed to get by. I mean, you know, it wasn't the most perfect Spanish that you hear, but he was able to have basic conversations with people and, you know, get by in some of the worst hoods in Caracas. So it uh, worked for him. So head down, start studying, and uh, hit the ground running. That's uh, always my advice. Bob saying that uh, they went to uh, Peniscula two months ago. Wonderful history, but make sure you get your walking legs on as going to the castle and surrounding town requires serious leg work. Yeah, a lot of places in Spain do, Bob. They require serious legwork. The other place that we saw there, Albarracin, I'll tell you what, uh, start at the bottom, get to the top, you will have sore Achilles tendons. I can give you the tip. Miguel coming in from Derbyshire, probably hot there too. Uh, James saying that uh, photograph passports which have been stamped and signed by, a not by the, the notary or a notary, we carry them with us in Spain, not expensive as passports, stay safe. Uh, and they stay in the safe. Yeah, that's a good idea. Get uh, some uh, copies of your passport stamped by notaries. So they have that uh, legal uh, validity. Uh, UB says, uh, I can never see Peniscola without thinking of Pensacola, Florida. Supposedly the U.S. city was named for the local native people, but the names are close to identical. There we go. Yeah, I think that one probably... It would be what you say there, the local native people, because it would be a, a, a more accurate name. For example, there's an Albuquerque here in Spain and there's an Albuquerque in the States. 
There's uh, other places here in Spain that have similar names. There's a, a, a small town in the States called Madrid, capital of Spain. You know, So I don't think they would have uh, varied with the name. So I think your, the theory there is right, that it's named after the local people. Uh, Steve says he went to Lanzarote a few weeks ago and everything was so expensive. Food, taxes and just the coffee, leche, leche, sweet but amazing. Yeah, everything's expensive, uh, Steve. Everything has gone up. Everything has gone up. Um, doesn't matter nowadays, uh, Bronnie. You can uh, write emails in uppercase or lowercase. It doesn't matter. It will get through. But it is normally, traditionally lowercase, I think, for emails. But it doesn't matter nowadays. Uh, technology has uh, fixed that problem, I think. Uh, what else? Thanaoria. Is it Arabic? I always thought it was. It could be, Janet. It could be Thanaoria. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It could be Thanaoria. You have to check out the uh, etymology of the word, and that will give you, uh, it will tell you where it came from. Uh, lovely place. Routinely claims Jimmy Buffett as its own, along with, uh, we we're talking about this place before uh, uh, that uh, UB mentioned. Still wearing flip-flops every day uh, for the passing of JB. Don't know what that means. Humidity, says Miguel. Uh, not high enough to compare with Barcelona. There we go. Jose Antonio confirming that uh, Thanaoria is Arab. Thanks, uh, Jose Antonio. We get answers quickly to the questions. Ola Stu from a windy Melbourne. Yeah, I saw it was windy uh, for the... Uh, I was watching the football today, the uh, Aussie Rules football. Well, I wasn't watching, I was listening. I don't want to pay for the uh, visual stream. Um, and uh, they said it was quite windy at the MCG. Absolutely, Anthony, thanks for that. Uh, then again, I suppose that in Melbourne, the weather doesn't start getting good until around January, February, right? Philip coming in from, uh, that's just a joke. Philip coming in from a warm London. Uh, James Martin was tasting Rioja wines this week. Excellent. I'm sure he enjoyed it. I'm sure he enjoyed it. Bag of Bones here. Thanks for showing the pic. Cunado is the one traveling, but he's got blisters. Yeah, I imagine people do get a lot of blisters on that Camino. <laughs> I imagine they do. Heidi saying that the flans in Mercadona are pretty good. Well, they were the best rated ones that we saw there from that uh, flan expert. Uh, I had one today in the restaurant Barco de Avila, but it was actually a pudding which has uh, bread in it. There we go. So a bit of a difference when it comes to the pudding. Sometimes they just say pudding flan nowadays. Maybe it's the same thing. I don't know. Patrick saying 37 on the Campo near Caspi, missing the summer already. Not. The last time temperatures were this high in the UK was back in 2016. Before that, 1911. There we go. I'm sure um, not many people around uh, from 1911 that can uh, remember those uh, hot temperatures. But uh, 2016, people can. So uh, what's that? Seven years ago. Sani's a bit late today. Apologies. Don't worry, Sani. Better late than never, as we always say. Uh, one of Janet's classmates in the Spanish class is cycling the Camino Primitivo. Brave man, just arrived in Salas. Sent, he sent pics. Beautiful. I think it is. Gino coming in with Isabella today from a humid uh, Toronto. A humid heat wave there. Unbelievable. Yeah, hot weather uh, in lots of places, right? Lots of places. Erica saying, horror to hear that such places like the two that we saw before are overcrowded. Yep, that's the tourism that we've got nowadays, Erica. Everybody's traveling everywhere. Lots of Instagrammers out and about taking photos for their Instagram pages. That's a, a big thing. I see a lot of people with their phones constantly up to their faces. Or at least I did uh, in Portugal this year. I couldn't believe how many people were just taking photos of everything with their telephone, just selfies. Unbelievable. Renan coming in from uh, Los Angeles. Uh, hello, Renan. Hope you're well. Uh, what else? Greek yogurt in Mercadona is really good, says uh, says uh, old guy. Says Grant. Yeah, thanks, uh, Grant, for that. Uh, James saying, uh, by September 76, the weather was cooler, but it was one of the hottest summers. There we go. So it had cooled down. No air con for Janet in uh, Oxford. I just shut the curtains and it's cool enough. There we go. So uh, good to see that you don't need air conditioning. I'm not a 
big air conditioning fan. Kevin Naples, very uh, sunny today, not too hot. I only watch Spanish movies, very good for Spanish. Yeah, it is a very good way. And now with uh, all of these streaming platforms, you can put any movie you want in Spanish nowadays. Netflix or Disney Plus or uh, Prime, I think uh, you can as well. Uh, a wheat beer is popular in Spain. My favorite beer, I believe they call them Trigo. Yeah, they, you can buy them here, but they're not. Uh, I wouldn't say they're popular. German, a lot of German wheat beers uh, in the supermarkets. If you go to a big supermarket, Spanish wheat, beer, wheat beers, not so much. Not so much. Popular in Argentina, says Anthony. Yeah, not here, no. Unless you go to one of these um, craft brewers, then maybe you can find it. Speaking of which, I have to go now to a craft beer festival so i'm going to say goodbye thank you very much for uh, watching today it's been a pleasure as always i'll be back again on sunday with another live stream uh, another video coming out tomorrow stay tuned for that one and uh, hopefully as i said i'll see you guys in the next live stream thanks for watching thanks for participating thanks for helping me out with the spelling of that uh, with the pronunciation of that word and i'll see you uh, on sunday hopefully hasta luego hasta entonces adios